Hi class, and for today's video, um, just a little bit of a background um, for my inspiration for today's video. We're actually going to be needing, it's very simple, you just need a pen and some paper. And um, it's actually like this artist, kind of like a movement that happens every October. It's called Inktober, where you get like a new prompt every day and you get to work with ink. And I think that's really fun and it's a really good practice um, just to make something new, even if it's not like something that you spend a long time on, just to make something new every day for a month. It can be really challenging, but it can also be a lot of fun. Um, and you don't necessarily have to follow like Inktober prompts. Um, there's a lot of different prompts. You can even make your own prompts or even I just suggest like what I do is I usually pick like a couple days I like the prompt of or I make a couple prompts and then you know, because I get it, people are busy, so then I just pick a couple, and then I do a couple, and it's a lot of fun, and so I thought I would show you a little bit how to actually shade and um, just draw a lot with pens and ink and stuff, because that's very different from working with, like, a pencil. Um, it can be really daunting, because, like, pens you can't erase, um, but... I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'll kind of just show you some of the more basic stuff um, so let's just dive right into this so like I said for today's video we're just going to be using a piece of paper and some pens um, I just have a lot of different pens here um, but anyone really works this is really probably closest to what you probably have for like a pen so we're gonna use this one today um i have some in just different colors um i might show you that a little bit later just so you can see you know um these are really more marker like but pens and markers are very similar so let's just dive right into it like i said so i'm gonna just grab out a pen and we're gonna start actually we also have like a ballpoint pen here, so we might just try this too, a little bit. Um, but let me see what color this is. Oh, it's never been used. Oh, nice. So we'll also use this, because I don't have a ballpoint pen in there. So, some of the first things we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to make like a shape for us to like, so I can show you how to shade it. Um, so for that, actually I'm going to use a pencil just to like... It doesn't interfere with the pen and what I really suggest even when I'm drawing in pen and stuff like that is I'll put a little bit down very lightly in pencil so I know where I'm going and then you can always erase that back out. Um, just jumping straight in with pen can be really intimidating so this is like a good nice like part pen part pencil. Um, it, it's just really nice and a lot of these techniques and stuff that you can do with pens you can also do with pencils there's just a couple that like there's a couple more you can do with pencils that you can't really do with pens as much, but pens are a lot darker than pencils. Um, so that can be really nice to get like a nice dark. Um, so we're just gonna start off. Um, I'll just make a couple circles. I'm not gonna make them too big cause we're gonna have a cup, a lot of techniques. Um, they don't have to be perfect circles. So the first one is actually called hatching and I'll cut the other pen actually. And what you do for hatching is you just, it's just straight lines. So let's say I wanted to shade this. I'm just going to draw some straight lines. And you just want to make sure that you keep a pretty consistent lining. And see, we're trying to get like the curve a little bit there of following the form and you just kind of want like an even spacing a little bit and then you just want to keep them all coming in the same direction for hatching um don't worry if you can't draw perfectly straight lines that's totally fine um and practice makes perfect um if you really can't draw a straight line or you really want something that has very straight lines you can also use like a ruler and you can come in and you can do that but it's just a little bit easier to just do it with a pencil or a pen and just, just do it straight. Um, the other thing you can do is actually in a, a little bit more on hatching. It's called cross hatching. So you just come in from a different direction and you make lines. So maybe 
since I have them coming this way, I want them coming this way for a little bit darker. So you just make your hatches overlap your other ones and see how that just makes it a lot darker right here. So we have like the lighter and then it gets into the darker. Um, so that's really what cross hatching is. Um, I'll give you a couple more examples. So like hatching could be like this. And then cross hatching is like this. Um, and it just is kind of like a texture and stuff you can make to shade it without just coming in and just making a straight dark. And then let's say you don't want to do straight lines or you maybe don't like the look of like cross hatching. There's this thing called patch hatching, which is like another variation on straight lines where it's you make some lines here and then maybe you make some here and then you make some here and then you make some here and here and they're just kind of going all in different directions and so you make like these patches that just overlap each other and that can really give you a lot more of like a sunny maybe if you don't like how the lines are looking this can really make a really interesting texture and it's a lot more just free form however you want it to go um, this one's a lot of fun. I like it. Um, there's a couple others that we're going to be getting into. And then I actually, at the end of this video, I took a couple sketches of some plants that I did. And we're actually, I'm going to show you just a little bit how these might all turn together to shade something. Um, so there's another type. So I'll make another circle. Oh, these pens don't. Sorry, um, I just, you probably, most of you are probably right-handed, but my fellow lefties understand how hard it is to use ballpoint pens. Um, just something that the ink doesn't fall out right for us. Um, but there's another type of shading that is called, uh, it's like called scribbling. Um, I think you'll see why in a second. So you just there's no rhyme or reason to it you just make a whole bunch of shapes you just kind of move your pen around any which way you want to go and then the more you these can, this one is the one that's like hard can be hard like it's easy deceptively easy but then it's harder to sometimes because you want to just keep going 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 because it's really fun and you're just moving it and getting it darker with See, like, it gives you a very, like, wild, uniform, uneven, but then it still gives you, like, a nice shading there. Um, this one's a lot of fun. Um, you can work to scribble in, like, more straight lines. Um, but it's, so, I mean, you can get it that way, where you use more lines that are straight, but still have the same kind of effect. Um, otherwise, a lot of people just make a whole bunch of circles and loops and squiggly lines um but that's another way you can just change up shading with a pen or a pencil is using that and then um the next way maybe you want to shade something is called contour lines a contour um if you don't know what contours are it's just basically like it follows the shape of something so for instance like your clothes um if they're like if you have socks they contour to your feet so they fit to your feet um it's just basically it follows around the outside type of a thing or like like that so that's what, kind of what a contour is and so for contouring you just follow since this is a circle and it's it's round you just make arcing lines that kind of follow what you assume to be the form. And then you can make more lines where you want it darker. And you're just kind of following it like that. Um, there's another thing called, with like what we have with cross hatching, where you can do contour lines, but you can do cross contour. So, they just follow the contour of it. Uh, 
like that. And that's another sh way to shade it is by contouring. Um, this one's a, a little bit harder because if you have like a 3D object and stuff, or you're drawing something 3D and to shade it with this, you have to have like an understanding of how it looks in a 3D space before you draw the lines because you're kind of like trying to draw the outside of it. Um, it's a lot easier with like basic geometric shapes like a circle or a triangle or stuff like that, but it can get really difficult when you're trying to maybe like contour like an arm or something. I mean, maybe you're drawing a person or an animal. That can be really hard. So this is a little bit harder one. But I think you guys are plenty talented enough to try it out. And I'll show you one of the last ones. And that is actually, let me make a circle. This one can take a lot of patience, um, but it turns out really nice. Um, it's a lot of fun, but you just got to be careful with how you do it. Um, it's called stippling, which is you just make a whole bunch of little dots. And you just got to be careful because if you move your pen when you're trying to make it, you can make like these little lines instead. And you're just trying to make dots. So you just dab the pen over and over and over. This one can be very time consuming. As you can see, because you just got to keep making dots. And getting the dots to go dark enough to be time consuming. But this one gives you a lot, a lot, a lot of control. And it's a little slower, so you can have a little bit more control when you're putting in your like shading. Because it's slow and gradual process where like some of these line ones it's very fast and you're just putting them in so it can be one of the better ones if you want to very slowly build up any kind of color in there but I mean you can kind of see how it's slowly starting to shade that in um, I won't go the whole time, or it would take me the whole time to put in all the stippling. But, um, that's just kind of like for, to review hatching. Here, let me try and draw this, write this upside down for you to see. The main types are hatching. And then there's the cross hatching and all the others. And then there's the scribbling. And then the stippling and the contour. So stippling there, contour there, scribbling is here, and then hatching is this one. And those are pretty much like your basic ones. Um, you can do a little bit different stuff with that. Um, you can have make a lot of patterns just with these basic ones. Um, and those are sometimes called different things. But it's just kind of up to you what you kind of want to do with it. Um, so you can do like maybe you want to cross contour or not cross contour. You just want to hatch. And you can see you can make with patterns like that and stuff. These aren't necessarily always for shading. You can use it to just make cool fun patterns um, that are a little bit easier than, you know, drawing out this flower and then redrawing all these flowers. Um, or they can really complement. Maybe you're trying to do a pattern and you want like flowers and then you can do lines. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, so I'm gonna start shading probably this one. 
Um, we probably won't have time for this one, but um, I'll just go into it. So I'm going to actually switch out of this ballpoint pen because it's been not working the best for me. But So I have my... Actually, I'm going to go with thicker pen. So I have what's called a brush pen, which is basically like a marker. Any kind of marker you have. So I'm just going to go in and I want to outline it with my pen. Some of these lines. And I'll probably just do little sections. But um, I really like these lines, so I'm going to keep some of them. And then maybe I want to shade these because they have these little wonderful stripes, the plants. So I want to keep some of the striping, but I want to like enhance it. So I'm actually just going to do, like I said, the contour lines. Or not the contour, the hatching lines. And I'm going to hatch. And see it's already adding a lot of texture. It. And then I'm gonna go here and see it's worked really fast, but it added a lot of fun stuff to this plant. Um, maybe I don't like how that looks. Maybe I want to switch it. Um, so I'll show you like another one on the bottom half. So maybe I really liked how scribbling looked. So for this, it's a little bit harder with a brush pen, but see, I can go in and put in texture. And like that's pretty fun too so I'll keep going there but see just picking different ways of shading and coloring this in with ink gives a totally different feel than the top leaf and the fun thing with this is if you're going in with scribbling you cannot mess up. Like this hatching, you can mess up if your lines get off a little bit. But scribbling, you can't mess up. Because they're just randomized lines. You just kind of go however you want to go. So that's always fun. And then just go here. And then maybe uh, up here, maybe I didn't completely like those lines, so maybe I just want to add a little bit more so you can always do the cross hatching. Maybe I'll only do it on one of the sides to show you like the difference. Let's see, you can get a lot of difference just in how many lines you add or how much you space them apart. Um, uh, let's say I want to do some quick stuff. Maybe you don't like how empty that feels. I'll slip real quick. But as you can see, those are some examples of it in action. Um, I definitely encourage you to all to try these out. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun with these. You can combine these with some of the other stuff that we've talked about. And just have fun. Um, you can always do these with pencils too. Um, I encourage you to try it with a pen just because it's a totally different experience trying to draw with a pen. Um, just like I said. Have fun with it, stay safe, 
enjoy the rest of your week and until next week i'll see you guys and just have fun